In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can power a power functions IR receiver from a 9 volt train speed regulator. And you can see we've, we've got the connections made. We're using the official um, adapter cable and the regulator is on, but we don't have an LED on the IR receiver. And this is a quick little trick. This might be as far as you need to go. If you have space for it, you can use an empty battery box and just put it in the chain. And if we go one direction, the LED actually goes out because it's basically a short circuit. <laughs> but the other direction, all of a sudden, it's lit up here. And the reason for that is inside of here, it's actually shorting those contacts together. If we look on Philo's webpage, we can see that the outer two wires are a steady nine volt supply. And then the inner two wires are the control wires. So those would be the ones that would run your motors. So this, this is a very simple way, if you've got plenty of space to work with, that you can power it from the regulator and you don't have to worry about batteries anymore. There are several examples of where this can really come in handy. Let's take a look at Pinwheel's free throw GBC module, where the shooters are actually controlled from a power functions remote. And if you know anything about GBC modules, these things run all day long, um, hopefully at least. <laughs> so if you want to take the batteries out of the equation, having to worry about them, then you could just power it from a regulator. I've used this in several different ways. Uh, on my monorail video, uh, all the power functions receivers are powered from the nine volt regulators. And also on my RCX code pilot, it's actually powered directly from the RCX itself. I have two ports ganged together so I can get a, about an amp to work with and that powers the power functions receiver. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can do this. Um, this was the first method I used. This is what is inside of my code pilot because obviously I don't have space for the whole battery box. Um, I don't wanna use a battery box full of batteries. I just wanted to power it from the RCX. And this is the top part of a battery box. I had one that had battery acid damage and was able to pop it out, pop this up and then just make a quick little jumper wire. Now, for whatever reason, <laughs> I tried this again, <laughs> and this thing will not come apart. This is from another battery box. So I don't know if, if some battery boxes are better or worse for this. This one was obviously worse. Uh, so, so your results may vary. I've also made adapters like this. Um, this part of the wire came from a third party, see there's no Lego logo, um, extension that I got on eBay or Amazon. They're all over the place. They're not hard to find. Um, the only problem I have with these third party connectors is they don't always stack well. Um, sometimes they'll, they, they just kind of stick up a little bit or they don't want to stay. Um, so your results may vary. I don't know if there's a certain place to get them that's better than others. Um, I've tried a few different ones. They seem hit, kind of hit or miss, even in the same batch. <laughs> so it's just something to keep in mind, but they're cheap enough. You can just get a bunch, maybe from a few different manufacturer or sellers and see what you get. And I cut the inner two wires here and then I have the, um, the outer wires, the nine volt supply and I've, popped it into a nine volt connector. So this serves two purposes because not only does it get, get the power flowing the right way where you don't have to use a battery box or something, it also negates the need for the official adapter cable. And those are getting kind of expensive. Um, if you want a guide on how to pop these apart and reuse them, I have a full guide on that, which I'll link below. And then there's one more use case I want to talk about. And that's if you're using a servo motor with a polarity switch. Because if you just have power on the outer two wires, it's not gonna do anything. It actually needs, I guess, power on all four. <laughs> so I also made this cable this morning. And so this was another extension that I cut. And I actually took the two wires on each side and uh, solder them all together and then put it onto a connector. And I may not have mentioned this, when I made this connector, it was a real, real pain because these wires are super tiny 
to get it aligned in here correctly and then and then crimped on there it, it was an absolute nightmare <laughs> i don't recommend it so what i would recommend is uh just like in my guide i recommend bn tech go 24 gauge wire this stuff is great it seems to be fairly widely available depending on your country um, so I just made, you know, this part of the connector and then soldered it on. So now we can show this. So this is a third party servo motor. I've never owned an official Lego one. They're very expensive to get on the second hand. But the third party ones work fine for me because I only need three positions. So that works great. So a use case for this would be, you know, I want to start and stop the monorail. I want to have this in the middle of a layout somewhere and then I want just a switch to turn it on or off. You could do that. Of course, you got the axle hole here if you want to use uh, a nine volt motor or something to, to control this back and forth. Or if you have a long enough wire, you know, you can have this all the way over on a control panel or something. So I hope you found this useful. Um, this is something I use over and over and over and over again. Um, so I thought I would share. And again, if you just use an empty battery box, you don't have to do any modifications. You don't have to do anything. All you need is the official adapter cable from Lego. Because I haven't found a third party supplier that has this end on, uh, on their extension cables. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them below, and we'll see you in the next one.